After the 1985 Mexico City earthquake, many individuals were left homeless either due to the initial earthquake or being unable to pay their now rising rents, leading to mass evictions. A housing rights organization called the Assembly of Barrios decided to create a mascot to help people out during these trying times, creating a luchador superhero persona called Super Barrio Gomez based on the already iconic luchador El Santo. Rather than fighting in the ring, he fought corruption on behalf of the people, organizing protests and labor strikes on behalf of the most disadvantaged people in the nation. Basically, merge Emiliano Zapata, El Chapulín Colorado, and El Santo into one person. While he was of course not as famous as those three, he did attempt to get close in order to spread his message, appearing on TV, giving his likeness to be used in comic books, and yes, even sometimes appearing in the ring. And one way that he tried to get known is basically appearing at every single left-wing activity in Mexico. You were at a housing protest? He would be there. The Zapatistas were organizing a get-together? He would be there. Basically trying to become a unifying figure of all left-wing dissenting movement. However, some of his more unorthodox ways of spreading his message were his bids for public office. His first bid for office was when he briefly ran for president of Mexico in 1988. However, much like Alberto Castillo of the Socialist Mexican Party, he decided to withdraw his bid in favor of supporting the campaign of Cuauhtémoc Cárdenas. However, a couple years later, he decided to run for president again in 1996. Now you might say, wait, Mexico didn't have a presidential election in 1996? Well, yes, that's true. But I didn't say he was running for Mexican president. He was running for president of the United States. Obviously, he couldn't actually win the presidency for many reasons and this was more of an advocacy organization type thing, he did actually earn some high-profile endorsements, including philosopher Noam Chomsky and Uruguayan writer Eduardo Galeno, who wrote this about him. Half a century after the birth of Superman in New York, Super Barrio walks the streets and rooftops of Mexico City. The prestigious steel American, universal symbol of power, lives in a city called Metropolis. Super Barrio, like the flesh and blood Mexican, hero of the poor, lives in a suburb called Nezahualcoyotl. Super Barrio has a belly and crooked legs. He wears a red mask and a yellow cape. He does not fight mummies, ghosts, or vampires. At one end of the city, he confronts the police and saves the starving dead from eviction. On the other end, at the same time, she's leading a demonstration for women's rights or against air poisoning. And in the center, meanwhile, he invades the National Congress and launches a harangue denouncing the filth of the government. However, as the 90s turn into the 2000s, Super Barrio kind of faded into obscurity, mostly remaining in comics, cartoons, and documentaries and such. However, there is one question that remains. Who is Super Barrio? As is tradition with luchadores, they kept their mask on and they became their persona. As is the tradition of luchadores, they are not allowed to reveal their identity to the public under any circumstances. And despite the fact that Super Barrio isn't an actual luchadore, he still somewhat abided by it, basically allowing others to confirm his identity, but not himself. The man most attributed to being Super Barrio is a man by the name of Marco Rascón Cordova, who has still remained in the public eye. Running for the head of government of Mexico City under the Humanist Party banner in 2018, and running for Cuauhtémoc Boromir in 2021 as a Citizens Movement candidate. While the official Super Barrio Gomez biography states that Marco was not Super Barrio and that was instead a task given to someone else, and Marco was just a person who helped create Super Barrio, it does seem very likely that he is Marco. They just look rather similar, and Marco has not necessarily been keeping it a secret that he was Super Barrio, basically using that as campaign tools for his candidacies. So yeah, I know this episode was relatively short, but come on, how could I not talk about Mexico's socialist superhero? Especially considering his iconic nature is actually inspiring real luchadores to seek public office like Blue Demon Jr. in 2021. This episode may seem like really out of left field and really weird, but again, this channel would not exist without that kind of content. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click that bell to be notified when a future video of mine comes out. And if you're interested in more content from me, you can go to my website, follow me on Twitter, join my Discord, check out my articles on the Independent Political Report, or consider supporting me on Patreon.